There are some choices that you would be able to make in a tabletop game that you can't really translate to video games. There has to be a finite number of choices that you go into. Uh, there has to be a finite number of characters that you interact with. There is a bit of limitation to the character itself. Alex, as you're probably aware, I am a fan of the Borderlands series. Yeah, just a little bit of a fan. I think your personality is a little bit of a claptrap. Yeah, shh, damn you. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, talking about two genres that you didn't think would go together, shooters and RPGs, actually, uh, this, this has enough, a little bit of a mild enough RPG elements that go with the shooting elements. I mean, RPGs shooter. and shooters go together all the time. At least RPG elements. Right. It, that gets into the nitty gritty of what you consider an RPG. Does it have to have RPG elements? Or do you actually have to have role-playing and choices to make it an RPG? Right. I'm not the person to ask about this. I don't care. The most recent release in the Borderlands series is actually not called Borderlands, but it was Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Um, yes. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands was a game that came out last year, and it was based off of probably one of the most successful DLCs that the series has ever had which was Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep that they did for Borderlands 2. Um, and uh, if you don't know what that is, it was basically that Tiny Tina decided to lead the Vault Hunters through a game of Bunkers and Badasses, which is their version of Dungeons and Dragons, uh, talking about all of the different tropes they're in as you try to defeat the Handsome Sorcerer, which is basically her analog for Handsome Jack in that game. <laughs> Um, Wonderlands goes back to Bunkers and Badasses as a full-scale game uh, where you lead these, these new characters on a little bit of a mission to defeat the Dragon Lord. Uh, and your character, though, this time gets to be a fresh creation that you get to make yourself. Uh, you are not playing a predetermined character like you do in previous Borderlands games, and you get to pick It's still a just class. the newbie. You just pick the flavor of newbie. Yeah, you get to customize what you look like and what you sound like and everything and uh, choose from one of four or five different character classes, I want to say. Um, down the road, you even get to multi-class and you get to choose a, a second class to mix and match if you would like. Um, I chose the Spore Warden. Oh, me too. Spore Wardens are great because you get your little, uh, you get your happy little mushroom friend. Yeah, he's good. Cool. I had just gotten that. Yeah, and and that's uh that's pretty great because you have played a little bit of this game yourself. Yes. Yes, I have played through to the end, and uh, what I wanted to talk about now, uh, in this regard, is Wonderlands takes the idea of tabletop gaming, and it applies it to a video game, yes. and this is something that's. Not necessarily new, I've seen some various kinds of adaptations or referencing of tabletop gaming in video gaming just a little before. Bit. Yeah, just a, just a little bit. I mean, obviously, there's more direct adaptations of tabletop gaming like the Baldur's Gate series, which is directly uh, revolving around uh, Dungeons & Dragons. This is more of a meta sort of uh, a view of, of that world, even in... Uh, Life is Strange, uh, Before the Storm, actually. Uh, Chloe is periodically throughout those chapters playing a game of, like, Dungeons and Dragons or something, something similar to it. Uh, and you make some character choices about what she's going to do with her character, uh, in the game. Uh, and they're sitting down at an actual, like, role-playing station playing the game. So, that's, that's kind of a little bit meta- but um, the adaptation of tabletop gaming to video gaming is a very interesting one. But more than that, what Wonderlands does is talk about the, the act of being a tabletop game as a theme for the, for the game itself. Yeah. Yeah, like it's, it's actually the point of the game. Uh, to, to explore tabletop as a game. And I guess my question is... Uh, you played a little bit of it. Do you think that the way that it does, like, the overworld and the class system 
is a good representation of how tabletop gaming works. I mean, that's broad, so no, generally, because like there's okay. a lot of different tabletop games. Mm -hmm. So if we mean like specifically like D and D RPGs like that, it's the perception of what I think people think tabletop gaming is like. Mm -hmm. Or per sometimes, for instance, what your actual game may be like. If oh, you sure. use miniatures and whatever. But I think it's more like the perception of this is what tabletop gaming is like. You have these things, it's over the top, it's very meta commentary, it's ridiculous with your group. Right. But it's, I don't think a good representation of like, this is tabletop. It's like, this is like a stereotypical tabletop group. I'm casting magic missile at the darkness. Can bring me some more Mountain Dew. Right. <laughs> it's it's like the South Park episode where they're playing World of Warcraft. This is the interpretation of what you do in the game. <laughs> more yeah, than more than the of. game itself, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of examples of the video games being a direct adaptation of tabletop yeah. gaming. We've played Especially many of them. if you Yeah, especially if you have anything that's D D based, which is your Baldur's Gate, your Neverwinter Nights, your all those ones, you know, those CRPGs right. for days. Yeah. Oh. Or Pathfinder or uh, Vampire the Masquerade. I was going to say Bloodlines is, is directly based off of that system uh, of, of Vampire. Uh, or Warhammer, for that matter. Yep. Which is based off of the tactical game. Um, so, yep. so you can adapt the system. I, I think yep. that there's been some pretty successful ways to adapt the system. But the flavor of actually playing the game in more of a meta context is, I think, what Wonderlands is trying to achieve more than yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah, because I can play a Warhammer 40k game. There's so many of them on Steam. Mm -hmm. um, I can play tactic games. I can play ARPGs. I can play third-person uh, hack-and-slash shooters. I can play uh rts games or an R rts rpgs in warhammer 40k on you know pc sure um but they are not there there's like one or two that are like the tabletop itself but like in virtual form but mm -hmm. aside from those they're just kind of like games in the setting that are different games based on what they want to do right right uh the uh the end of all of this is pretty much that Wonderland still plays like the first-person shooter that former Borderlands games. Were. Right. It do it doesn't even give up the guns. They just flavor them slightly different. Yes, you have the aesthetic of the the guns being different. So instead of just pistols, I have the little hand crossbows essentially. Yeah. The shotguns are the elemental weapons that you sprinkle the magic dust into. Yeah. And you shoot them. And then uh, I like that you get a melee weapon. I just don't like that it's not really a primary thing. It's not. No. Can I exchange my my gun for a melee weapon? No. The melee weapon's kind of an afterthought if enemies are close to you. Right, right. I had to rebind my melee weapon because it was like V on the keyboard and I rebound it to my middle mouse button because I'm like, I don't want to have to eh, eh, yeah, to just melee. The, yeah, start to creep your fingers over in order to do a melee attack. I, yeah. I found that if I rebound to the middle mouse button, I'm already using this to shoot, so I just kind of go like that and can melee enemies yeah. several times in a row without changing, without swapping my keys to move. Right. Yeah. So... Uh, the thing I liked the most about it, though, is the idea of doing, like, a, a different interpretation of some, like, classic fairy tales and fantasy, you know, tales. That's what a lot of the sub-missions are all about, like, sub-quests. Uh, the, the point at the end, which I won't spoil for you, but the, the, the story at the end, too, is also a little bit more about the relationship between the players and their characters... And, and how those two things kind of interact and when characters become more than just something that you're playing and a, really a part of you, 
uh, is is like where the the message of the whole game eventually goes for Tina and friends Dragon you made Lord. along the way. Right, well, because the Dragon Lord and Tina have a, a more direct relationship than you get from the very beginning of, of the game. As far as like meta commentary on tabletop gaming, it does an okay job, but it's not really a representation, like an, an adaptation, so much of yeah. of the genre. Um, now that being said. Since at the beginning of this I did say that we were going to talk a little bit about adaptation of tabletop to video games. I also have a little bit of a qualm with how some of those tabletop games do get um, adapted when it comes to video games. Because you have some limitations. There, like there's, yeah. there's some benefits and there's some real problems with it. There are some choices that you would be able to make in a tabletop game that you can't really translate to video games. There has to be a finite number of choices that you go into. Uh, there has to be a finite number of characters that you interact with. There is a bit of limitation to the character itself. But the benefit then comes in having more definitive math. You know, like, in terms of, like, this bolt goes from here to here and does this much damage and we know where your line of sight is because you're looking at it right now in this world. And the benefit of actually seeing your characters and seeing the game world and not having to visualize it in your mind. Um, right. I've had conversations, though, where there are people that were disappointed by several video game RPGs because the choice that they really wanted to make was not an option and and it's unfortunate that it wasn't an option um so that's hard to account for too because you want to give a certain experience so sure if you say were to give them 20 different choices i mean you can't do that for every single thing in the game because exactly. it just becomes bloated Right. And so you kind of whittle it down to uh, a several choices at that point. But, you know, even then, everything you're doing has several different outcomes. Yeah. Which is why I don't remember the number, but Baldur's Gate technically has several, like, I think it's several hundred thousand different endings. But I, I imagine because... that those are, are, if you categorize each choice and how they Pro interact I with the different so. choices. Right, right. I assume so. Yeah. Um but, like, you know, it's already got this many different things you can do, and it's not a small game, but, like, there's only several choices you can make with each NPC for different things. Uh, unless Certainly. you also then just decide to kill the NPC outside because whatever, which I believe you can do. Right, right. Like, overcoming obstacles, I had one, uh, for instance, with me, I had to kill this, get rid of this floating eye scrying thing. And I was like... All right, what's the best way I can deal with this? I have to do it stealthily. It's resistant to a lot of damage. It doesn't have a lot of hit points, though. And so I was like, what I uh, opted to do was to sneak and then pick it up and then throw it into a chasm full of lava. A Build chasm, it. huh? Yeah, chasm full of lava. There you go. <laughs> Chasm. No, no, no. It's fine. Age. I say it that way on purpose. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna name my next uh, RPG character Chasm. <laughs> Good. So yeah, like overcoming its damage resistance because I used falling damage. So sure. I went yeet down the hole. Yeah. And dead. And nobody noticed it. So I was like, could have just combated it. Probably could have done some magic. I don't know, but yeeting it down a fucking cliff works. That wouldn't work in a Star Wars RPG though. Yeah, well, it's because no Darth one Maul dies came from back falling. From... Yeah, that's why Darth Maul came back in the Clone Wars. That's why. That's why uh, Palpatine uh, didn't die after falling into oh, a so... reactor. There are some limitations to what video games can do. I just think that uh, the reason why we have a tendency to play those more than tabletop gaming is because you kind of need a group in order to do the tabletop gaming. They're more accessible. Right, and a lot of the math is in front of you. Like, yeah. I, I think I've talked about that before, is that when you're playing a tabletop game, you're you're figuring out a lot of the math of the actual tactical aspects of, of rolling and what your character can do, etc. And in a video game, most of that is kind of behind the scenes, uh, usually where you don't have to specifically look at it all the time, and you kind of just go into combat and fight 
and the map is kind of done behind the scenes for you, all the rolling and everything like that. Um, that's even true in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands because that's how they figure out like criticals and stuff like that. So you're firing a mile a minute and then all of a sudden it's like critical, critical, critical because you've, you've hit your critical threshold. Um, which I think was an interesting change because they used to have just like critical areas on uh, enemies in previous Borderlands games. Uh, where you just, if you hit there, you're getting critical hits. Uh, and, and in this one, you actually get a critical chance to hit. So they did change that to make it a little bit more in line with the, in, the, the tabletop experience. But Well, I think uh, the other thing, too, with why RPGs are a lot easier to get into with like video games is because you can get tutorialized in a video game much quicker than learning an RPG like tabletop version. That's true. You have to kind of learn the whole system of an RPG. Uh, a, well, a tabletop you don't RPG. have to, but I feel like it's harder to teach players in increments with that. Because it's like, yeah, with, with tabletop. Because if you were to do incremental, it's like, cool. Well, first thing you need to learn is how to make your character, and you need to learn all of that. Sure. Unless you give someone a pre-made. But then it's like, all right, uh, you have to like give people the scenario and tell them what they need to do. Sure. Or like ask them what they want to do. It's like, all right, you need to roll perception, so roll your d20, add that check there, and do this. And that's how you do the skill checks. And then attacking is this, and it's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's to a lot remember. to learn for some people. Yeah. But a video game hides a lot of those things so that it becomes a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, it's all the graphics up at the front where you're like, oh, here's my character, and here's how I move, and now I move, and here's how you hit the enemy. And you just go through that process, and it's a lot easier to digest right up at the yeah. front. And before you know it, you've actually understood the entire system, but you've had you've been led into it very right, very slowly over the course of time. Yeah, right. uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to adapt tabletop well to video games, and you have to understand that those are two very different genres. I do have to play Baldur's Gate three because I I did hear that they was a very good representation of that. Um, even though you can't necessarily do everything in the game, they do give you a lot of you player choices. Lot. Yeah, you have a lot of choices. They do. You have a lot of choices. I guess my question that I would ask everybody else out there is, what games do you think did a good job of adapting a tabletop system to a video game? And if you have those, please let us know what they are. Uh, maybe so that I can play them myself. Uh, I have had occasion to play a video game version of a tabletop system just so that I can see if I like the tabletop system. <laughs> there you go. That's how you get into Gloomhaven. I tried Gloomhaven. I did not like Gloomhaven, so... The video game or tabletop game? The table... Uh, the, the video game. I didn't like the, the tactical room-by-room... Uh, progression in, in Gloomhaven. It felt well, too Well, it saves you crawling. money because the, the tabletop version is expensive. Great. Anyway, let us know in the comments down below.